In light of the recent collision near Salisbury Station in Wiltshire on October 31st, 2021, during which 14 people were injured, one of whom critically, the Salisbury area has been no stranger to major accidents in the past. The most notable occurring on July 1st, 1906, when the London and South Western Railway's boat train derailed within the station itself after taking the corner at excessive speed. The reason as to this accident remaining a cauldron of rumour and mystery to this day. The London and South Western Railway, or LSWR, had been formed in 1840, and operated along its trunk main line from London Waterloo via Basingstoke, Salisbury and Exeter, to the resorts of Devon and Cornwall, as well as to the port city of Plymouth, serving multiple stations including their main terminus at Friary, and an intermediate station at Devonport Kings Road, the main rival for the LSWR being the Great Western Railway of 1835, which operated into London Paddington, and ran trains to Plymouth at the North Road Station, which was jointly operated by both the GWR and the LSWR, and their dedicated stations of Devonport Albert Road and Mill Bay. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, Plymouth was a major port for ocean-going liners, which often anchored in the harbour on eastbound voyages from across the Atlantic to allow for the transfer of passengers to land transport in order for them to reach London a day earlier than if they'd stayed aboard the ship, which would steam overnight along the south coast of England before reaching its final destination of Southampton. Both the LSWR and the GWR responding to the demands of swift travel between Plymouth and London by way of dedicated non-stop boat trains. Rivalry between the Great Western and the London and South Western was fierce, as both companies illustrated significant advantages and disadvantages against each other, the Great Western boasting a terminus directly on the dockside at Mill Bay Station, and a shorter route between Plymouth and Exeter, which ran over southern Dartmoor to Newton Abbott, and then along the Tynmouth and Dawlish Sea Wall to Exeter, while access to the LSWR's own dedicated dockyard terminus, Ocean Quay, required a steep climb up the Stonehouse Pool branch to Devonport Station, followed by complicated shunting manoeuvres which required top and tailed steam engines, exacerbated further by their mainline route being forced across the northern flanks of Dartmoor via Oakhampton, although they were able to gain advantages east of Exeter, as the LSWR mainline via Salisbury and Basingstoke was much faster and more direct than the equivalent GWR route via Bristol, Bath and Swindon. In 1906, the Great Western was preparing to open a route that would even the competition by way of a direct railway between Reading and Taunton via Newbury, Westbury and Castle Carey, the line avoiding Bristol and shaving well over an hour off the journey time, meaning that the LSWR's advantage was soon to be evaporated, the company management demanding that engine crews do what was necessary in order to remain competitive. This deadly rivalry came to a head on July 1st, 1906, with the Plymouth to London Waterloo boat train, consisting of five coaches hauled by brand new LSWR L12 class 440 number 421, the train carrying in full first class accommodation 43 passengers who had disembarked the America Line ship SS New York at Stonehouse Pool in Plymouth, the SS New York gaining brief notoriety in 1912 when due to the tremendous suction caused by its incredible displacement, the New York was ripped from its davits by the passing RMS Titanic as it set out on its ill-fated maiden voyage nearly causing a collision between the two vessels in Southampton Harbour. Disaster only avoided thanks to the intervention of tugboat Vulcan. Although whether a collision in the harbour between the Titanic and the SS New York may have saved the former from its own fate four days later is another matter. With train duties conducted by an engine driver, fireman, guard, ticket collector and two waiters, the service, named the Ocean Special, departed on its usual Saturdays only diagram from Ocean Quay towards London at 10.30pm travelling the first 117 miles between Devonport and Temple Coombe, without problems in 2 hours and 21 minutes, and at an average speed of 50 miles an hour, the train making a 3 minute scheduled stop at Temple Coombe in order to change engines, with L12 number 421 being attached, and running of the service being taken over by driver William Robbins and fireman Arthur Gadd, before the service got underway again at around 1.10am. Under a normal average speed of around 58 miles an hour, the train was expected to complete the 112-mile journey from Temple Coombe to London Waterloo in approximately 1 hour and 56 minutes, arriving into the capital at 3am, although the generally straight and level profile of the LSWR's route was queered by the bottleneck of Salisbury Station, a major junction on the main line which allowed for connections north to Westbury and Bristol and south to Eastleigh and Southampton, the station notable for a sharp 30 mile an hour curve at its eastern end, followed by a steep incline up towards Andover. At around 1.57am, the Ocean Special approached Salisbury at full mainline speed, 
whereupon it passed straight through the station in excess of 70 miles an hour and jumped the tracks when it reached the sharp bend at the eastern end of the platforms, tipping over and slamming into the side of the London to Yeovil milk train and a parked engine, the wreckage piling up in a mangled mess of broken coachwork and twisted metal in which the lives of 24 passengers, together with Robbins, Gad, and the fireman and guard of the park locomotive, would be claimed. In the aftermath of the disaster, the ladies' waiting room at the station was converted into a makeshift morgue, with wreckage from the crash taking weeks to clear, and with Robbins and Gad having been killed that morning, a solid testimony as to why they hadn't slowed for the 30 mile an hour curve could not be discerned, although many conspiracy theorists and rumours abound as to the reasons why, including that Robbins had been bribed by an American passenger to get the train into London faster than normal, though this theory is largely dismissed, as at no point was either Gad or Robbins in contact with the passengers in the carriages behind. Another suggestion came down to the deadly rivalry between the London and South Western Railway and the Great Western Railway, as a not uncommon practice among the luxury passengers of various ocean liners was to place steep bets as to which of the two boat trains would reach London ahead of the other, a gamble not unknown to engine crews, and one that could have been a potential motivating factor behind Robbins wanting to drive his engine as fast as possible, a theory supported by the fact that crews often marginally exceeded the speed limit on the corner so as to get a good run up the bank towards Tunnel Junction and Andover to the east. In this, it suggested that Robbins had become disorientated due to fatigue, having been on duty for nine and a half hours, and therefore had no recollection of where he was in relation to Salisbury, while medical incapacitation, such as a heart attack or stroke, has also been theorised as to why he allowed his train to run through the station at such a high speed, although no post-mortem examination of either Gad or Robbins was ever conducted to confirm this. Regardless, the disaster at Salisbury did give rise to several significant acts of heroism as people from both the station and town converged on the crash train to help save as many as they could, one example being Sidney Chick, fireman of the heavily damaged parked locomotive, who, despite being severely scalded by boiling water, demanded that the survivors of the crash be given medical treatment before himself, only to succumb to his injuries at 1pm later that day, while postal workers from the nearby sorting office crawled into the destroyed sections of the wooden-bodied carriages to drag out the injured, despite the possibility of the ruptured gas lantern setting the coaches ablaze. News of the crash made headlines worldwide, especially in the United States due to the number of American passengers killed in the incident, while the mayor of Salisbury, Fred Baker, telegrammed his condolences to the American ambassador, receiving in response a personal letter from US President Teddy Roosevelt thanking the people of Salisbury and the Salisbury Infirmary for helping to save as many lives as possible, while the chivalry of Sidney Chick, against his vicious burns, were immortalised in the writings of Richard O'Leary, a local author who detailed Chick's gallant acts, a tragic irony being that O'Leary's daughter, Eileen, would later be a victim of the Titanic disaster of 1912, which itself was inexorably tied to the SS New York from which the passengers had disembarked. In the end, without either Gad or Robbins to provide some answer as to the crash, no conclusive reason could be discerned as to the accident, the Salisbury derailment coming during a period when several tragic accidents involving overnight sleeping car trains had occurred within the space of only 16 months, including the Grantham disaster of September 19, 1906, which killed 14, and the Shrewsbury crash of October 15, 1907, which killed 18, each of these being due to excessive speed and were put down to driver error. In response, Salisbury was made a compulsory stop for all trains travelling along the London and South Western Railway's main line, and the speed limit on the curve reduced further to a mere 15 miles an hour, this move severely affecting the performance of the LSWR's Ocean Special against the Great Western's equivalent as it struggled to compete following the opening of the line between Reading and Taunton, the last of the LSWR's Plymouth boat trains operating on May 28, 1910, after years of sustained losses. Today, the disaster of 1906 has largely been forgotten, but in remembrance of the 28 lives that were tragically cut short on that July morning, their names remain inscribed on a small tablet located in Salisbury Cathedral, while a memorial service conducted in 2006, the 100th anniversary of the crash, helped to revive interest in the accident, and bring to light the bravery of everyday people as they were suddenly flung into a terrible circumstance. <laughs>